of the Cane Hill locks done. We've uh, been at Devizes for two days, two nights I think, three nights, moored up against a little CRT working boat because there was nowhere else to go. Um, we get itchy feet after we've been somewhere for a day or so. So originally we were going to wait until Tuesday when we knew that um, one of our followers was volunteering at the lock. Uh, we could meet him and go down, or you know, go down with him for a bit on the locks, but we can't stay here any longer. We're a bit got itchy feet. So that's it. Got up bright and early this morning and um, haven't seen anybody come up the locks yet, so I don't know quite what it's going to be, if anything's going to be in our favour. But we're off. First gate was really, really difficult to open. Um, paddles and the gate. So I said to Rich, he's got another 28 to go, I think now. There's one boat, looks like it's coming up through this lock, two boats coming up through this lock, so maybe that bodes well for us. Perhaps they'll be in our favour for a little while now. Fingers crossed. So as you can see, Rich is turning and turning the, uh, the gate mechanism. Paddles are barely lifting. It's, uh, oh, I don't know if that's a small gear, a big gear or whatever it is, but um, it's going to be a slow process, I think, today. So we've just done six locks and now we start the Cane Hill flight proper. There's a series of 16 locks, one immediately after the other with a short pound in between. And the uh, interesting thing about this flight of locks is that each lock has its own water reservoir on the side of the canal. So interesting. I think Fran got the, uh, the tough pedal there. So, here we go, it's going to take a couple of hours and uh, we've got some great volunteers working with us and I think we need it. Beautiful view down the valley. And plenty of gong gooslers as well. When you see it like that, that's quite a daunting prospect from the bottom looking up. Well, that's what we'll have to be doing in a couple of weeks when we come back this way.
find us on the sofa on a well, <laughs> warm, drizzly day. We're snuggling in because it's a bit wet and a bit rainy, and uh, and we thought we'd just have a lazy day today because we're always because doing we stuff. We're always seem to be busy, don't we? Yes. <laughs> so today we just that's it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the drone footage. That's uh, a new toy of ours. Yours. <laughs> I looked at you waiting for you to say yours. I'm not touching it. I have been, it has been said that I should have a go, but I think yeah. I'll, um, it, no. <laughs> so uh, it's going to add a new dimension, I think, to the vlog, uh, providing I'm mindful of the new legislation regarding drone flight, etc., etc., which I am. Uh, but some of the footage on there might not be 100% there, but we'll get there. And also, as long as you're mindful... Mindful? Well, mindful, you just said In mindful, a higgy kind of way. Just not to try and take it two inches above the canal, just because you think you can. Yeah, but I'm trying to bring the viewers optimum experience of the network. <laughs> it has been lost at least once in the trees already. Yeah, well... <laughs> that was your fault, actually, because you said, what about just hovering it over a lock whilst we're doing the lock system? So I took my eye off the drone for a split second, and it decided to fall down below the tree line and uh, land in a hawthorn bush, but fingers, well, well no fingers crossed, it is okay. Yeah, that's fine. So, yeah, new toy. The uh, Cane Hill flight was interesting, wasn't it? It was really good. It was really good. It wasn't that difficult. Uh, we were lucky to have some volunteers for a part of it. Um, yeah. And admittedly, we didn't get all the way right to the very end. It was quite a hot day. Yeah. Well, but, uh, I think in one day we did something like, was it 21 lux? Yeah. 22 lux and left yeah. the rest for the following day, which was fine. Yeah, we Might are of a certain age now, dear. <laughs> Might be a different story when we've got to go back up in a week or so. Yeah, but, going uh, up is always harder, isn't it? Because you're walking uphill as well as... The water just seems to take longer to fill up the locks than it does to empty the locks, doesn't it? So I think we've got quite a good little routine going, haven't we, with the locks? Mm, and yeah. uh, you, had, admittedly, you did most of them and I did most of the driving. I don't think... Um, the paddles to wind up, some of them are taking 60 know, turns yeah. to raise. I know. And it, that's worse to me. It's worse than having a, a stiff, hard paddle that will take 10, 12 turns they to don't lift up. Have a, is it that they don't have a gear mechanism on them? They so don't. some paddles on other locks are really, really hard to turn, but you've only got to do maybe 10 turns. These, it's actually easier to turn, but it's no, just... No, that's the trouble. They have got a gear on them. Oh, gear, okay. Yeah, it's the other mechanism way around. On them. And it's too low. Yeah. But uh, some some of the ladies think it's great, though, don't they? Because they can just keep going, and it. What you mean is the men haven't got the stamina. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, they're different. <laughs> so, yeah, the Cane Hill flight was great, and got some little footage there for you of it, and uh, it was uh, amazing. The scenery there was just stunning. And in fact, the scenery from then onwards, and we're, we're actually moored in Bath now. We're, we're here for a, a day, two, two or three days, as much as we can extend it for. Um, and uh, the, the, for, for me, the scenery's got better from Cane Hill to here in yeah, Bath. It has. Uh, yeah. It's hillier, and it's more undulating, it's typical Cotswolds type scenery. It's beautiful, absolutely stunning. Heading ever closer to Bath. The hills are getting higher. The scenery is absolutely gorgeous. And unfortunately, not all the boats are. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see from up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me We 
meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. have a change of plans again don't we? Well we've, we've got to Bath, decided last night we were going to have a couple of days looking around Bath anyway um, because as we've said before I've never been but decided last night to have a look at the stoppage program for the winter and if we would carry on our plans as we, we intended to which is to go to Bristol and then back towards London by the time we get to the Grand Union, it is the Grand Union isn't yeah, it? Yeah. There are so many stoppages planned for November, December. We're going to have to really chase our tails to, to do all the things we want to do. And once again, we've had to pull ourselves short and say, we, you know, we don't want to miss out on things that I'm seeing along the way. We passed a lovely little village yesterday and looking in the book, it says it's really worth the mile walk from the canal to go and see it. Um, and we're not having the time to do all of that. So we've actually decided that we think we are not going to go to Bristol, all the way to Bristol, because right. we're going to end up having to really rush to get back. Otherwise, we're going to get stuck on the Kennet and Avon for the winter. Um, and we don't want to be doing that. So. Or stuck in London or stuck just, yeah. just, just on the Grand Union, because one of the um, closures is on the 3rd of December, I think it is, isn't yeah. it? Something like that. Uh, and that's, we need to be past that. So, uh, and we don't want to rush to get there to get past it, so. And we may even not do the loop around London as well. Mm. The important thing is just to go at our pace and see things as we want to see them. And that's why we've now got maybe four days in Bath. And we can afford to have a day today just reading and weaving and mm. And resting rather than having to be somewhere. The visitor moorings here are 48 hours, so it would mean in, in a couple of days we've got to moor out of town on a seven day mooring and then walk in to do the rest of the uh, visiting. But it's, I think now we've made that decision, we're really pleased, really happy, aren't yeah. we? It's, uh, yeah. We don't like rushing around, we don't feel like we need to be anywhere. Why should we? You know, we're not into this for that. And we've had a taste of bath and the towpath here is so busy yeah. so many cyclists some of them are courteous but 70 percent of them are not they just whiz past it's the first time actually on all the canals i know it's a big thing with boaters they do complain about cyclists mm. being cyclists we see it from both sides really but this is the first place where the 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 cyclists are racing along and yeah, just and not giving you any consideration they expect yeah. you and the dogs to instantly get out of their way and they don't even say thank you whilst, we do get out of the way whilst and then, maintaining you know, the speed they're going at yeah um anyway that's our grumble if, well, if it is um, one <laughs> um so yeah we're gonna have a, a nice couple of days here also we've noticed that the uh, in the last couple of weeks the weather's really or the season is really turning isn't it um I met a night last week on the boat and it was suddenly really dark and dreary and we both got a bit fed up that by nine o'clock we just wanted to get into bed. We did go you know, into bed at nine o'clock. So we've, um, we then went out and bought some little bits of twinkly lights and some more yeah. candles and a little table lamp. Um, yeah, we bought a nice little 240 volt lamp. Um, with a LED, isn't it? It's an LED. Yeah, very bulb. low power bulb. And it's, it's minimum requirement out of the batteries, and it's lovely. Yeah. It's just so nice to have that light up the room, and you can read in here, you know, without having these dull ceiling lights, which you know are all. They make the room darker. You put those <laughs> you, on. <laughs> they suck all the atmosphere <laughs> out the room. We've started chopping up wood, or you have, for mm -hmm. winter, um, so that the um, well deck has now got a nice little pile of wood building up in it, and uh, it's lovely. The evenings, are, it just makes all the difference to have the boat feeling cosy in the evenings. Oh, it's, really, it's really so different, isn't it, just with a few twinkly lights. And so many people have said to me, we did put a post on Facebook with a picture of the lights, and people have been saying to me, 
Are you not staying on the boat all winter, are you? Well, yes, we are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, surprise, surprise. Which is not a surprise for many of you because you understand that. But most people just seem to think that you just go summer cruising and then you go home to, <laughs> to a house in the winter. But what else? We've been on this boat, we calculated today. We bought the boat six months ago now. And it has just flown by, hasn't it? Yeah, I can't believe we've been on there six months. We've only been full-time liverboards for just over two months. But we have spent, in that six months, more time on the boat than... Oh, well, lots more. Lots we've only more. spent a month back at the house, haven't we, in total, yeah. over that time. If, if, that, if that. If that. Derek asked uh, a question of us on YouTube. He's been, been going through all our back catalogue. He's like, he should have something better to do, shouldn't he? <laughs> and um, he's asked, is there anything we regret? And we sparked a discussion with us about that, and uh, we thought and thought, and there's absolutely nothing, nothing we regret about doing what we're doing. No. I was always sure right from the beginning that a year ago, this, this month, I started looking uh, at YouTubers doing what they're doing, what we're doing, rather, uh, a year ago and um, mentioned it to Fran then and finally, well I didn't finally convince her but uh, within a couple of months we, we were on the way to do it, sold the house and about to buy the boat etc but the, there isn't anything we regret but there's two things we'd do differently and the first one is we'd have had a slightly longer boat and this is 50 foot uh, we've probably gone for a 57, 58 foot. Even 55, I think. Yeah. It's my weaving loom that's the problem. <laughs> yeah, you're taking up too much room. Even to have the, the well deck, another two or three foot on the well deck, so you could sit out there comfortably, would be great. But we've got to build a bench out there anyway, haven't yes. we, that we can sit yeah. out in the evenings. Yeah. Um, and the, the other thing, but the, you know, if we've got a 57 foot, 58 foot boat, rather than a 60 foot, uh, it, it means you, it means you can cruise the whole network. I mean, 60 foot's touch and go in parts of Yorkshire and the Huddersfield Canal or somewhere such. The locks are quite short. 57 can go 57 anywhere. 57 can go it? anywhere, yeah. Uh, and the other thing we'd have done differently is, is probably buy a boat that didn't need so much internal work doing. Uh, we still haven't finished off the panelling on the walls in here. Uh, tiling needs doing in the kitchen, the new work surface and sink tap in the kitchen. Bathroom needs gutting and redoing and um, it's not the end of the world but it's jobs that uh, you know need doing and need doing pretty soon to be honest. But at the end of the day the boat is going to be the way we want it and not the way somebody else designed yeah, it. So that that's true. the benefit of doing it that way around. Yeah. How about anything, has anything surprised you? living on it. Is there anything, is there anything that's not, you oh, didn't expect? Yeah, that you have taken to it like a duck to water. I didn't, I, I knew I'd always be okay with it because of the sort of person I am, I'm quite adaptable, but I didn't realise that it ticked so many of my boxes about my way of life, um, you know, the minimum footprint, living on a minimal footprint. Outdoors, I've always been an outdoors person anyway. Mm. I've mm. never been a materialistic person and, and getting rid of clutter. And it just ticks every single box. Everything that's important to me fits in with narrow boat living. And I didn't realise that. So I don't think I, I can't see that I will want to go back to land now. No, neither could I. And that then, you know, the next. In a year or so, when we've had this boat for two years, perhaps we'll be looking at the next step. You know, do we want a bigger boat? Do we want the traditional style boat that um, we love so much with a we've real proper an engine? engine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> an engine for Fran to polish that she can get to. And um, yeah, so you know, would that would require us selling the house and that is a big commitment sell the house all your equity is then in the bank and we know we're okay you know. for two, sort of two years now um yeah. and then after that we'll start making decisions about mm. what we do next
take a step back to see the truth. We've been staying in a lot of towns lately, haven't we? Bradford and Avon and now in Bath. And to wake up next to a concreted towpath or an asphalted towpath is isn't our cup of tea, is it? And it's the nice noise you can the hear town, trains going by and sirens yeah. from ambulances, etc. Uh, just aching to get into the middle of nowhere again and uh, just um, do our own thing. And your weaving's coming along really well yes. now, isn't it? Where's your latest creation? So we're doing, I don't know if you're going to see this, is, we're wall hangings now. So that's the latest one. Um, so we're ready more or less, I think, to start selling on the towpath, mm -hmm. or towpath. I don't know how you say it. So I've just got to work out a way of displaying stuff now. I've got quite a few scarves done. Um, we're going to do little framed pictures and maybe some cards as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that is um, actually a present for somebody. But um, Claire. they will be on Etsy very, very shortly. And yeah, pleased. And I love doing it. I just want to spend yeah, it all good. my time it's, doing it's, it. Uh, <laughs> the work that goes into it and uh, the time taken, you know, you never sell them if you're charging per hour. But uh, it's a lovely thing and beautiful, beautiful thing to create, isn't it? Yes. And it's not too noisy either. No. And it stops me talking, doesn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, the car. Oh, anybody want a Nissan Navara 12 plate? For we're a actually, bargain? <laughs> we've left it up the towpath about eight miles away. No, and yeah. I'm thinking if we leave it in a few weeks, perhaps somebody, somebody will steal will it. <laughs> so that's the trouble. We're, we're leaving it longer bef bef between picking it up, aren't we? Uh, we next... walked eight miles in the day, didn't we, to go and get it and bring it to where we were. By the next video, we'll tell you where it is and we'll tell you where the key is. So you can just come and nick it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, it's what did we say it was about seven or eight miles away now, um, and it can it plus. can stay there until <laughs> until we get back to it. Now we're not going to walk back to it because we we want to do more walking. And just right behind us is Salisbury Hill, famous for uh, Peter Gabriel's song from 1976. Go on then, fantastic beat. Climbing up on Salisbury Hill, <laughs> doopy doo. I think it's in my head and has been for days. So we're going to go walk up that. That's 625 feet, I think it is. We're at, we've actually got to go to Brighton at the weekend and we've decided to get trains because we don't want to drive. We've no. just become so anti car. <laughs> Not. You know, we just we just don't like driving anymore. So we well, we drove get into London recently, didn't we, for the. Um, Boat tubers barbecue, uh, and we were only at Newbury or somewhere, <laughs> weren't we? If that, no, we weren't even on the Ken and Avon. We were in uh, on the Thames at Goring, and um, it took us three hours to get to London from less than fifty miles away. It's it was not worth frightening. It, it? So we decided we're catching the train, and to be honest, it's as cheap as the, the fuel we'd use. So. Yeah. Uh, so we've got things to do, we can't sit here talking, we've got books to read. Yeah, so thanks again for watching and thanks to all your comments uh, and hello to all your new, all our new subscribers. Um, Good luck to anybody that's, that's been inspired to our, by us and is going to start off on the journey. Good luck to you. Well apparently we have inspired so many people to do the same and I hope we don't put an over tint rose tinted spectacled view on it but it we don't try to no, we say we it as it is but yeah. it's yeah so yes follow us on twitter and facebook and uh, instagram and uh, thanks again for watching thank you see, see you, you next, next time, time. <laughs> <laughs> bye
think we can honestly say autumn has arrived. Beautiful, misty, golden morning. <laughs>